الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد الحمد لله as you heard this is the first lesson from a series of lessons where we will cover Risala of Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala and this is present in Majmu' al-Fatawa and there are a number of small little works concerning the diseases of the heart and their cures And as you heard from the brother Nam, no doubt the heart is a very important topic and something that is deserving of our attention. And likewise, something that we should understand correctly because if we look in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah azza wa jal, tabaraka wa ta'ala, he highlights for us the importance of having a healthy, sound heart. For example, Allah Azza wa Jalla said, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ There will be a day, the day of resurrection, that neither wealth nor children will avail anyone, except for the one who comes to Allah Azza wa Jalla with a heart that is salim. A heart that is healthy, a heart that is sound. And if you were to look at the explanation of the scholars for Al-Qalb As-Salim, you would find, and the Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala sums it up excellently, where he summarizes the statements of the Mufassirun, the scholars of Tafsir. It is the heart that is free of a shirk So a heart that is upon a tawheed, a heart that is upon the sunnah, that is free of innovations, bid'ah, a heart that is upon obedience, that is free of disobedience, immoral lusts and desires and the like. Even to the extent, if you go to the tafsir of Al-Imam Al-Baghawi, rahimahullah, he quotes from Ibn Uthman and Nisaburi, rahimahullah, where he mentions that Al-Qalb As-Salim, this heart, when Allah Azza wa Jalla said, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ On a day when neither wealth no children, no sons will avail except for the one who comes to Allah Azza wa Jal with a sound, healthy heart. He said, هُوَ الْقَلْبَ الْخَالِ مِنَ الْبِدْعَ الْمُطْمَئِنَ عَلَى السُنَّةِ This is the heart that is free of any innovations and it is content upon the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as the scholars, they mention Al-Qalb, Malik Al-Jawarih, the heart is the king of the body. If the heart is upright, if the heart is healthy, then likewise the limbs will be in accordance to that. If the heart is corrupt, naam, then likewise the limbs will also be corrupt. As the brother, Zallah Khair, and he mentioned the hadith, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, أَلَا إِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُضْغَةِ إِذَا صَلُحَتْ صَلُحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْبِ That in the body, there is a morsel of flesh, there is a piece of flesh. If it is upright, if it is sound, then the rest of the body will be sound. If it is corrupt, then the rest of the body will be corrupt. And he said it is the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this is the heart. This is the heart. So no doubt, this is a very important topic that we find, alhamdulillah, 
The basis of this is addressed in the Quran, in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Likewise, many of the scholars have written books from the time of the Salaf up until this present day of ours. If you look at Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, he has the book, one of the chapters in his Sahih is those affairs that soften the heart. Naam. So Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, and I printed mine from Majmu al-Fatawa of Shaykh al-Islam, and it's very similar or exactly the same to what was relied upon in the book that was translated in English, Diseases of the Hearts and Their Cures. قال الشيخ الإسلام تقي الدين أحمد بن تيمية رحمه الله تعالى Does anyone know when did الشيخ الإسلام بن تيمية die? What year? I have some books coming inshallah هدايا some gifts the brothers that are coming from Philadelphia in the, the, the van inshallah they will bring it with them so just remind me that you had the question right inshallah and we'll give you the book when they arrive Now 728 Hijri رحمه الله تعالى he said الحمد لله نستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما so Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, All praise is due to Allah. We seek his aid and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our souls and the evil of our actions. Whomsoever Allah Azza wa Jal guides, then none can misguide. And whomsoever Allah Azza wa Jal misguides, then none can guide. I testify that none has the right to be worshipped in truth, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alone without any partners. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger. May the peace and blessings be upon him, his family and companions. Faslun chapter fi marad al wa shifa'iha Concerning the diseases of the hearts and their cures. So again, some alhamdulillah, this has been printed as a treatise in itself, a risala. Naam, amrad al the diseases of the hearts. And their cures. So Shaykh al Islam he started, he said, Qala Allah Ta'ala anil munafiqeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said concerning the hypocrites, fi qulubihim maradun fazadahum Allahu maradha. Allah Azza wa Jalla said concerning the hypocrites, in their hearts is a disease, and Allah Azza wa Jalla has increased their disease. In their hearts there is a disease or a sickness, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has increased their disease. So he starts by mentioning a number of ayat that affirm that some hearts are afflicted by diseases. May Allah Azza protect us all from them. And I'll read briefly the tafsir of As-Sa'di. وَإِلَّا شَيْخَ الْإِسْلَامَ الْحَمْدِ لِلَّهِ He will mention the relevance of these ayat بَعْدَ قَلِيلٍ after a short period of time after his introduction. As-Sa'di رحمه الله he said لَأَنَّ الْقَلْبِ يُعْرَدْ لَهُ مَرَضَانِ يُخْرِجَانِهِ this is because the heart is affected by two types of sickness or two diseases that causes the heart to depart or to lose its health and likewise its balance. So the heart is affected by two diseases. And these are the main diseases of the heart. If you look uh, the other specific details, they return back to these two. And these diseases, he said, يُخْرِجَانِي عَنْ سِحَّةِ وَاعْتِدَالِي They cause the heart to lose its health and likewise its balance or equilibrium. يَرْحَمَكَ <coughs> Allah. He said, مَرَدُ الشُّبَهَاتَ الْبَاطِلَ The first disease is the disease of doubts, false an erroneous doubts, a shubahat. وَمَرَدَ الشَّهَوَاتِ الْمُرْدِيَّةِ And the second is the diseases of immoral lusts and desires. Now, so he gives examples of the two. 
So these are the two diseases, and remember them, because inshallah they will keep coming up, and I will ask you again concerning them. He said, فَالْكُفْرُ وَالنِّفَاقِ وَالشُّكُوكُ وَالْبِدَعِ كُلُّهَا مِنْ مَرَضِ الشُّبَهَاتِ Disbelief, hypocrisy, doubts, and innovations, all of these are examples of diseases of doubts, مَرَضِ الشُّبَهَاتِ he said, وَالزِّنَا وَمُحَبَّةِ الْفَوَاحِشِ وَالْمَعَاصِ وَفِعْلُهَا مِنْ مَرَضِ الشَّهَوَاتِ And as for some examples for the second type of disease, the disease of lusts and desires, he said, fornication, the love of indecency, the love of fahisha, likewise disobedience, and committing acts of disobedience, all of these are from the disease of lusts and desires. Wal-mu'afa, the one who is in a state of well-being. May Allah Azza grant this to each and every one of us. Man'ufiya min hadayn al-maradayn. The one who is cured. By who? By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From these two diseases. Now, if a person is cured from these two diseases, what does that mean? then obviously if they're cured of these two diseases in the absolute sense, فَحَصَلَ لَهُ الْيَقِينَ وَالْإِيمَانَ وَالصَّبَرَ عَنْ كُلِّ مَعْصِيَةِ Therefore, they possess certainty and faith, which is the opposite of what? What marad? Naam, الشبهات. The opposite of that disease of doubts is الْيَقِينَ والإيمان. Certainty and faith. وَالصَّبْرًا كُلِّ مَعْصِيَ And likewise, they have patience in staying away from every form of disobedience. Which is the opposite of what? The disease of lusts and desires. And then Sa'adi, he goes on to mention, he said, عُقُوبَةَ الْمَعْصِيَ الْمَعْصِيَ بَعْدَهَا The punishment for disobeying Allah is a disobedience after that. May Allah protect us from that. Like the reward for al-hasana is al-hasana ba'daha. The reward for doing a good deed is a good deed that comes after that. Because look, Allah Azza wa Jalla said, فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٍ In their hearts is a disease or a sickness. فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا And Allah increases them in their sickness. عُقُوبَ A punishment after a punishment. Likewise, Shaykh al-Islam, he mentions, رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ لِيَجْعَلَ مَا يُلْقِ الشَّيْطَانُ فِتْنَةَ لِلَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٍ وَالْقَاسِيَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ And he, the Most High, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Allah Azza wa Jalla said, that he, Allah, may make what is thrown by the shaytan, by the devil, a trial, a fitna. A fitna for who? A fitna for those in whose hearts there is a disease, and whose hearts are hardened. So Nam, Allah Azza wa Jalla in this ayah, He mentions that this is a fitna for two groups of people. The first, those fi qulubihim marad, those who have a sickness or they have a disease in their heart. Again, showing us what the importance of having a sound, healthy heart. And likewise, the second group of people, wal qasiyati qulubuhum. And I have a question for the brothers, alhamdulillah. I'm aware that the brothers, they study an nahu. Why is it here that in the ayah, وَالْقَاسِيَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ Why? What's the reason? What's the i'rab in that verse? When Allah Azza wa Jalla said, لِيَجْعَلَ مَا يُلْقِ الشَّيْطَانُ فِتْنَةَ لِلَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٍ That there is a fitna, a trial for those who have a sickness in their heart. وَالْقَاسِيَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ Why? Why is it, why is it majroor? مَعْتُوفَ عَلَى مَادَ تفضل. Ma'atuf ala mada? Huh? Kayf? If it was ma'atuf, la. Naam, ahsant. It's ma'atuf ala ma al ala ala ladina. Because remember, lil ladina, Allah Azza wa Jalla said, liyaj ala ma yulqi shaytanu fitna lil ladina fi qulubi marad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He made what is thrown and presented by the shaytan a fitna, a trial. لِلَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٍ For those who have a sickness in the heart, وَالْقَاسِيَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ And likewise, 
a fitna for those lil qasiyati qulubum for those who have mother hard hearts and again even that the hardness of the heart al imam ibn rajab rahimahullah has a treatise a risala concerning qaswat al qalb the hardness of the heart which in itself as well is very, very beneficial so then shaykh al islam mentions again he mentions a number of ayat a number of verses why to show that when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions diseases and sicknesses of the heart and the dangers also in these ayat we can understand the danger of having a sick heart that was a fitna for those individuals who have a disease in the heart and those individuals who have a hard heart naam as for the third group so that was sinfan the third group alhamdulillah al qalb as salim qalb al mu'min the heart of the believer which is healthy and pure alhamdulillah it's not a fitna for them shaykh al-islam he said he mentioned another verse wa qal la lam yantahi al-munafiqun wal ladina fi qulubihim marad wal murjifun fi al-madina lanughriyannaka bihim thumma la yujawirunaka fiha illa qalila if the hypocrites and those in whose hearts is a disease again mention ala sabil al-dham is mentioned as something that is censored and blameworthy who wants to be mentioned among the munafiqun the hypocrites in the same context as the hypocrites no one if the hypocrites and those in whose hearts is a disease and those who spread false news among the people of medina cease not if they don't stop what we shall certainly let them overpower them then they will not be able to stay in it as your neighbors but for a little while likewise he mentioned wa qala another verse allah azza wa jalla said wa la yartab alladhina utul kitab wal mu'minun wa li yaqul alladhina fi qulubihim marad wal kafiruna madha arad allah bi hadha mathala the meaning being of this ayah and that no doubts may be left with the people of the book and the believers and that those who have a disease in their hearts and the disbelievers here are those who have a disease in their hearts they mentioned along with who the disbelievers and the, and those in whose hearts is a disease and the disbelievers they say what does allah intend by this parable what does allah intend by this wa qala ta'ala and allah the most high he said qad ja'atkum mau'izatun mir rabbikum wa shifaa'un lima fi sudur wa huda wa rahmatun lil mu'minin there has come to you admonition from your lord and a cure for that which is in the hearts a guidance and mercy for the believers naam and just a small benefit from that ayah well as i said so yati all of this alhamdulillah shaykh al islam will explain in more detail in a nice concise fashion this ayah when allah azza wa jalla said qad ja'atkum mau'izatun mir rabbikum wa shifaa'un lima fi sudur wa huda wa rahmatun lil mu'minin there has come to you an admonition from, for, from your lord and a cure as sa'di said fa innahu mushtamila ala al ilm al yaqini the quran is a cure the sicknesses the diseases of the heart the cure is the book of allah and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allah tells us in this ayah that the quran is a cure Sa'di said fa innahu mushtamilan ala al-ilm al-yaqin because it contains certain knowledge you feel the yaqin no doubt about it certainty alladhi tazulu bihi kullu shubha wa jahala wal wa'd wa at-tadkir alladhi yazulu bihi kullu shahwatin tukhalifu amr Allah because in the Quran alhamdulillah we find certain knowledge which every single doubt alhamdulillah would be removed if a person was to rely upon the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every doubt and every ignorance so if somebody has a doubt the jawab the answer is in the Quran if somebody has a is if there is ignorance to remove that ignorance the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likewise in the Quran you find al wa'd admonition with tadkir a reminder through which every type of lust Alhamdulillah is lost and would disappear those lusts that oppose the command of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala so yes 
In the Quran, there's a cure for what? Marad al-shubahat, the disease of doubts, wa marad al-shahawat, the disease of lusts. And if somebody is not cured by that which is in the Quran, if somebody is not cured from the diseases of the hearts by that which is in the Quran, then there's no cure for them. That is why, الذي يريد أن يعالج قلبه ونفسه مثلا بالبدع the one who tries to heal his heart or his soul with innovations it only takes them further away and it only increases them in sickness likewise Shaykh al-Islami mentioned the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وقال وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءُ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا and we reveal to them and we send down to them the Qur'an. And we send down the Qur'an, that which is a healing and mercy to those who believe. And it increases the wrongdoers, the tyrants, the oppressors in nothing but loss. And we send down, to, we, we send down the Qur'an, which is a what? The Qur'an is a cure. Now, a cure for the qalb, and likewise even a cure for the body. Remember, Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, his student, Ibn Al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he mentions in a Dawah Dawa, he said that he was in Mecca, he didn't find any adwiyah, he couldn't find any medicine. He said so he started to treat himself, he became sick, he started to make ruqya upon himself with Fatiha al-Kitab, with Surah Al-Fatiha. He said, Alhamdulillah, and he became better. So now the, the Quran is a cure for spiritual illnesses, amrad al-qulub, and likewise even the sicknesses of the body. Naam. Waqal. Shaykh al-Islam, you mentioned the ayah, the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Surah Al-Tawbah, وَيَشْفِ صُدُورَ قَوْمِ مُؤْمِنِينَ وَيُذْهِبْ غَيْذَ قُلُوبِهِمْ And heals the, the breasts of a, of a believing people and removes the anger of their hearts. Now, so he mentioned at the beginning just a number of ayat that highlight the, the sickness of the heart, the disease of the heart. And also we can say, the dangers. Now, and also we can say how it is censored in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he goes on, he gives an example now. For somebody to understand what, yani, marad al qalb, madha yurad bihi, what's the meaning of the disease of the hearts or sickness of the hearts? What's the meaning of that? He gives a, an example that, alhamdulillah, many people can relate to. Actually, everyone can relate to it. Because every single one of us has experienced sickness at one time in our life. Wallahu a'lam. He gives an example. He said, وَمَرَضَ badan, The disease or the sickness of the body. So now you can understand. The sickness of the heart, he said, he starts by mentioning the sickness of the body. What does it mean to say the sickness of the body? خِلَافُ sihati wa sarahihi. It is the opposite to its healthiness. And soundness. وَهُوَ فَسَادٌ يَكُونُ فِيهِ This is referring to a corruption that exists in the body that what? It spoils its perception and natural movements. يَفْسُدْ بِهِ إِدْرَاكُهُ وَحَرَكَتُهُ الطَّبِيعِيَّةِ So now look. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said the sickness or the disease of the body is opposite to its healthiness and soundness. It is corruption that exists in the body which spoils what? Its perception. The perception of the body. Naam, the perception of the body like what? S- seeing, hearing, naam, touch, smell, the taste. So when a person is sick, Again, somebody is sick, you have the flu, sometimes you can't even taste what you're eating. So you've said, Mada idarakahu. When the body is sick, or the body has a disease, a person sometimes can't even taste what they're eating. La yufarriq. He can't differentiate between what tastes, what is appealing, and what is considered to be foul to him or her. Likewise, it also ruins or affects detrimentally the natural movements of a bod- the body. So when a person is sick, they find it may be difficult to move. So now he's giving the example of the body. Pay attention because 
He's going to give something similar as it pertains to the heart. How the disease of the heart, it affects it in a similar way. فَإِدْرَاكُهُ إِمَّا أَنْ يَذْهَبْ كَالْعَمَى وَالصَّمَمْ وَإِمَّا أَنْ يُدْرِكَ الْأَشَّاءَ عَلَى خِلَافِ مَا هِيَ عَلَيْ كَمَا يُدْرِكَ الْحُلْوَ مُرَّ كَمَا يُخَيَّلْ إِلَيْهِ أَشَّاءَ لَا حَقِيقَةَ لَهَا فِي الْخَارِجِ He said, نعم, continuing, he said, it's perception, the perception of the body is lost. Either, he gives some examples, such as blindness and deafness. A person is blind, they can't see. They lose out on the sense of what? Of seeing, sight. If a person is deaf, they can't hear. So they lose out on the sense of hearing. Now, even some diseases, diabetes. If a person has diabetes, even sometimes they lose out on the sense of touch. So he said, perception of the body, again, when the body is sick, it is lost either like such as blindness and deafness, or it comprehends things incorrectly in opposition to the reality. Such as perceiving something sweet to be bitter. The body, now it finds it difficult to process information. Can't differentiate between what is sweet, what is bitter. Sometimes maybe what is hot, what is cold. Or sometimes it imagines things which have no reality externally. That's when the body is sick. If a person has extremely high temperatures, they can start to hallucinate. He said, وَأَمَّا فَسَادُ حَرَكَتِهِ الطَّبِيعِيَةِ As for the corruption that affects its natural movements. So that's the first thing. يُفْسِدُ مَاذَا إِدْرَاكَهُ The disease that it affects and it corrupts the perception of the body. He said the second type of disease or the second, in the second fashion or manner that disease affects the, the body, he said, as for the corruption that affects his natural movements, he said, فَمِثْلُ أَن تَضْعُفْ قُوَّتُهُ عَنِ الْهَذْمِ وَمِثْلُ أَن يُبْغِضْ الْأَغْذِيَةِ الَّتِي يَحْتَاجْ إِلَيْهَا وَيُحِبَ الْأَشَّاءَ الَّتِي تَذُرُّهُ وَيَحْسُلْ لَهُ مِنَ الْآلَامِ بِحَسْبِ ذَلِكِ وَلَكِنْ مَعَ ذَلِكَ الْمَرَضِ لَمْ يَمُتْ وَلَمْ يَهْلِكِ So he said, then this is like the body lacking the energy to digest food. Now some diseases, the body can't digest food. You go to a hospital, now sometimes they give nourishment through needles, where it goes directly into the bloodstream. Why? Because a person, he can't digest food. So he said, as for corruption that affects his natural movements, then it is like lacking the energy, energy to digest food, or detesting the nourishment that the body requires. The body needs certain things, but the body detests it, it rejects it. Or the body, it loves things that are harmful to it. And as a result of this, due to this, it results in pain, depending upon the extent of this. But it does not die, nor does it perish, due to this disease. بل فيه نوع قوة على إدراك الحركة الإرادية في الجملة فيتولد من ذلك ألم يحصل في البدن إما بسبب فساد الكمية أو الكيفية. And if you Look at this, even Shaykh al-Islam in reality, alhamdulillah, هذا مفيد حتى في باب الطيب. This is beneficial even as it pertains to understanding medicine or understanding the diseases of the body. Naam. So Shaykh al-Islam, he said, rather, the body still possesses a type of strength that allows it generally to perform willful chosen actions, but it leads to pain in the body either due to an imbalance of something or a misapplication. And he's going to explain in detail. So he's saying, look, the pains of the body, he said, إما بسبب فساد الكمية والكيفية فالأول إما نقص المادة يحتاج فيحتاج إلى غذاء Therefore the first could be due to a deficiency of something that is needed and required for one's diet and nourishment. 
How many times a person goes to the doctor, their, their body is experiencing th- certain things, maybe lethargy, maybe they're tired all the time, Naam. or they're having various problems. They go to the doctors, they take from you a fast, a blood test, they say you're lacking vit- vitamin D, or you're lacking kada, you're lacking in calcium, you're lacking in this, and they give you supplements. They give you vitamins or they give you minerals. So Naam, even in terms of medicine, even modern medicine, alhamdulillah, this is something that is even true even today. Hatta liyum. Imma naqsul mada fa yahtaj ila ghada. Person is deficient in a dietary constituent, something they require for their body. Wa imma bi sababi ziyadatiha. Or it's due because they're consuming too much. If you look at diabetes, it's because it's an overload of sugar. Diabetes, which affects many of the people. Naam. Majority of the people that suffer from it, because there's two types. Naam. The majority of the people that suffer from it is because what? They consume too much sugar. So therefore what? فَيَحْتَاجِ istifraq. So therefore they need, they need for this, they need for their body to be cleansed of this thing that is, it's too much in their body. So again, alhamdulillah, this is something that is relevant. So we can understand it is when he goes on to talk about the sickness of the heart and the cures of the heart. He said, Wasani, the second again, Al Kaifiya Wasani Kakua fil Hararati wal Buruda Kharij and Ilachidal for Yudawa. The second, then it is like excessive heat or cold Nam in the body, which causes it to depart from they are at state of internal stability. For yudawa, so therefore it requires medicine. There in the, the translation there's a khata. I don't know. Who has the book? Anyone have the book with them? The book, The Diseases of the Heart in English? What does it say in there? At that part? The second. Yeah, there's an error in the translation. That's why... Exactly, كيف? Is, uh, how is it? He says here, كقوة في الحرارة والبرودة خارج عن الاعتدال فيداوى It requires medicine, it needs to be treated. نعم, in order to what? To address the extreme heat or to address the extreme cold, meaning that exists in the body. So look, even brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refuses to give perfection to any book except his, his book. So no matter how good the translator is, Al-Mutarjim, قد يخطي, may make a mistake, an error. That's why علينا أن نتعلم اللغة العربية. It's upon us that we learn Arabic. Not that we just become, you know, we become pleased and we suffice with translations. No. Look, he right there, the, the, the translator, he erred, he made a mistake. وَفَاتَتْكَ فَائِدَ If you اعتمدت على الكتاب وحده If you relied on his translation alone, then the benefit of the words of Shaykh al-Islam would have passed you by. Why? Because of a mistranslation. That's why we should all endeavor to learn Arabic. Why? Because the Arabic language is what is a miftah, it's a key to the various sciences, the ulum of the religion. Naam. There's no such thing as a scholar that doesn't know Arabic. There's no such thing, doesn't exist. And the ulama, they talk about the awsaf of the mujtahid, they mention from the descriptions and the characteristics is, is knowledge of the Arabic language, knowledge of al-Nahu, knowledge of Arabic grammar. Naam. And we'll highlight a few other errors when we, inshallah, when we go through the book. Faslan, chapter. Then he said, وَكَذَلِكَ مَرَضُ الْقَلْبِ The same applies to what? The sickness of the heart or the disease of the heart. So look, he gave you an example of the disease and the sickness of the body. To, alhamdulillah, so that it becomes clear to you what is meant by the disease or the sickness of the qalb. He said, and the same applies to the sickness of the heart. وَيُحِبَّ الْبَاطِلَ الضَّارِ فَلِهَذَا يُفَسَّرَ الْمَرَضِ تَارَةً بِالشَّكِّ وَالرَّيْبِ 
كما فسر مجاهد وقتاد قوله في قلوبه مرض أي شك وتارة يفسر بشهوة الزنا كما يفسر به قوله فيطمع الذي في قلبه مرض So he said the same applies to the sickness of the heart. The same applies to mother, the sickness of the heart or the disease of the heart. He said it is a type of corruption that prevents the heart from what? Tasawwur. It's perception. And likewise, it's intent or it's will, meaning action, selected action. He said it's perception. The perception of the heart is corrupted due to doubts. It is corrupted due to doubts. It is exposed to until it is unable to see the truth or it sees it in a matter which opposes the reality. Now, the Prophet ﷺ told us about this. The Prophet ﷺ, he told us that this can happen to the heart. Now, with the heart... It is an able mother to recognize the truth. Or it sees things in other than the, 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 other than the reality. As comes in the hadith. That comes in Sahih Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, تُعْرَدُ الْحَسِيرَ عَلَى الْقُلُوبِ تُعْرَدُ الْفِتَنْ عَلَى الْقُلُوبِ كَالْحَسِيرِ عُودًا عُودًا the fitan, trials and tribulations, تُعْرَدَ الْفِتَنْ عَلَى الْقُلُوبِ كَالْحَسِيرِ عُودًا عُودًا The fitan, trials and tribulations, they are presented to the heart. One after another, like the reed mat is woven. The reed mat is what? It's when they used to make the mats, it used to be like made out of like twigs or sticks. One after another, one after another. And you place them close together, so it makes a mat. You tie them together. Meaning what? Fitan is going to come and it's going to be consecutive. One trial and one trial after another. تُعْرَدَ الْفِتَنْ عَلَى الْقُلُوبِ كَالْحَسِيرِ عُودًا عُودًا فَأَيُّ قَلْبٍ أُشْرِبَهَا نُكِتَ فِيهِ نُكْتَةٌ سَوْدًا Any heart that absorbs this fitan, these trials and these tribulations, a black dot is placed on it. May Allah protect this from that. All types of fitan. مَضَارَ مِنَا وَمَبَطَنْ وَأَيُّ قَلْبٍ أَنْكَرَهَا نُكِتَ فِيهِ نُكْتَةً بيضا. And any heart that rejects this fitan, these trials and these tribulations, again remember, fitna to shubahat, fitna to shahawat, the disease of doubts and the disease of lusts and desires. Any heart that rejects it, a white dot is placed upon it. حَتَّى تَصِيرْ عَلَى قَلْبَيْنِ Until you have two hearts. Until you have two hearts. One of them, the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned is black. What did he say concerning that heart? That is relevant here. As it relates to a tasawwur, tasawwur al-qalb. Can anyone tell me, what did the Prophet ﷺ say about the heart that is black? That ends up being black. He said, لا يعرف معروفا ولا ينكر منكرا إلا ما أشرب من هواء he said, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, that it does not recognize any, the truth. That heart that is black, it can't see the truth. So I'm going to ask you, so what is corrupted here? Exactly, it's tasawwur, the perception of the qalb. لا يعرف معروفا, it can't see the haq, that which is correct. ولا ينكر منكرا, and it can't reject falsehood. It can't, what? It cannot recognize the truth, nor can it reject falsehood. And brothers and sisters, a person, at one period of time, they may be in a state, alhamdulillah, where they can recognize the haq, and they can reject falsehood. But look, if the diseases of the heart, amrad al qulub that's how serious this matter is. Amrad al qulub the sicknesses and the diseases of the heart, can lead قد تؤدي ماذا إلى رد الحق to a person to reject the truth. That's why حذيفة he said رضي الله عنه حذيفة من اليمان إن الضلال حق الضلال أن تعرف ما كنت تنكر 
وأن تنكر ما كنت تعرف فإياكم والتلون في الدين فإن دين الله واحد He said misguidance, true misguidance is what? He said that you accept what you once used to reject. The person's heart is sick. هذا هو القلب المريض. You accept what you once used to reject. You once used to say هذا الشرك ورفضته and you rejected it. But then غدا والعياذ بالله a person says لا هذا التواصل بالصالحين that is seeking to draw nearer to Allah عز وجل through Mother, the righteous. It's shirk. A person says one day, no, this is bid'ah, al-khuruj ala al-hukam. La yajuz. Yukhalif asla min usuli ahli sunnah, rebelling against the Muslim rulers. Nam is an innovation. It opposes one of the fundamental principles of ahli sunnah. Then rather than tomorrow, the individual, he says, wal-iyadu billah. La, it depends. Yani, hadha yarji ila al-maslaha. It returns to the benefits, it returns to the harms. So he said that a person, look, a person, that's the danger of what? Even ma'asi, innovations. Afwan, sins and disobedience. Al-ma'asi, it can lead a person to accept bid'ah. As mentioned by Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah. That's why la yutahawan bil ma'asi, a person doesn't take disobedience lightly. Because a person can continuously disobey Allah, disobey Allah, disobey Allah, it could lead to him falling into bid'ah. So Hidayfa, he said, that a person, true misguidance is what? That you accept one, something that you once rejected. Or you reject what you once used to accept from the haqq. Again, that's a sign of a sick heart. So the Prophet he told us, Nam, the tasawwur of the qalb, yes, it can be corrupted. لا يعرف معروفا ولا ينكر منكرا. Except that which is in accordance to the desires. The hawa, again, according to the amrad, those sicknesses that are in the heart. He said, حَتَّى لَا يَرَى الْحَقِّ To the extent that the heart is affected by doubts, it cannot see the truth. أَوْ يَرَاهُ عَلَى خِلَافِ مَا هُوَ عَلَيْهِ Or it sees it in opposition to its reality. Or the heart is affected Meaning, the chosen and the selected actions of the heart وَإِرَادَتُهُ بِحَيْثُ يُبْغِدِ الْحَقَّ النَّافِعِ So again, the heart can be corrupted by what? Where the chosen, selected actions of the heart, they are corrupted. Where the heart now, it hates the truth, the beneficial truth, and it loves detrimental or harmful falsehood. So look, the heart الآن, هذه من أعمال القلب. Look how the actions of the heart are also corrupted. Because the heart, يُبْغِدِ الْحَقِّ This heart, the sick heart, it hates the truth. النَّافِعِ Which is beneficial. وَيُحِبَّ الْبَاطِلَ الدَّارِ And it loves falsehood, falsehood that is harmful. And that is why brothers and sisters, Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, the word marab, sickness or disease, is sometimes explained to mean doubt and uncertainty. الشك والريب so look how it pertains to what the disease of shubahat. As we remember the statement of Imam al Sa'di rahimahullah, al kufr wal nifaq, wal shukuk wal bid'ah. All of them are examples of what? Diseases of? Diseases of shubahat. The disease of shubahat. So sometimes the salaf, like Mujahid Qatada, explained the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fi qulubihi marad, in their hearts is a disease or a sickness, meaning doubt, shak. Watara, and sometimes when we find marad, disease or sickness in the Quran, you find some of the salaf explaining it to mean the what? Naam, lusts and desires. Naam, as the Shaykh mentioned, shahwat al zina, the lust of fornication, indecent acts. Kama fusira bihi qawluhu, as the saying of Allah Azzawajal has been explained. فَيَطْمَعَ الَّذِي فِي قَلْبِهِ مَرَضٍ Lest he in whose heart is a marad, a sickness, a disease. Here, that sickness and disease is what? شَهْوَةَ الزِّنَةَ The lust of fornication. وَلِهَذَا صَنَّفَ الْخَرَائِطِ كِتَابِ اِعْتِلَالَ الْقُلُوبِ Does anyone know his name? If somebody knows his name, I'll give them again a hadiyah book. 
and when he died, or even just his name. Naam, he died in the year 327 Hijri. 327 Hijri, and Al Khatib, Rahimahullah, praised him. He said he was an individual who was Hassan al Akbar, who good things were said concerning him, and he had beneficial works. And his name is, his kunya is Abu Bakr Muhammad ibn Ja'far. Naam. He said, Walihada Sannafa, Shaykh al Islam said, Walihada Sannafa. Al-Khara'iti, and that is why Al-Khara'iti, he compiled the book, I'tilal al-Qulub, the sicknesses of the heart, or the diseases of the heart, أي مرضها وأراد به مرضها بالشهوة, and he intended by this the disease or the sickness of lust. If you go back to that book, and it's available, طبيع, that book has been printed, نعم, if you look at the intent of the author, Al Khara'iti, he, ref- he was referring to Al-Qulub, the diseases of the heart, he was referring to Al Shahwa, lusts and immoral lusts and desires. Wal Marid Yu'dihi Mala Yu'di Sahih. Fayadurru Yasir al Harri wal Bard. Wal Amal Wanahudalik min al Umur al Lati La Yakwa Aliha li Dafi bil Marad. Then Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, the sick person is harmed by things that do not harm the healthy person. Khalas, inshallah, we'll stop there, ikhwan, and we'll continue from that point, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala, later on. Jazakumullah khairan, wa barakallahu feekum, wa subhanakallahum wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruk wa tubu ilayk.